Every now and then, there will be a new product that is so unexpectedly good that even though it may not be perfect, but I will be smiling when I'm testing and reviewing the product. This Shark Slider Nano is exactly one of those products. I'd say if you are looking at buying a compact motorized slider, just go and buy this slider. You don't even need to watch this review. But if you're interested in finding out why I like this slider so much and also why it makes me say it is not perfect, then continue and watch this review. Kia ora, good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at this motorized slider from iFootage. This is the Sharp Slider Nano. Now, even though it is a slider, but there are just so many features and so many things that I can talk about. So in this video, I will have to only pick some of the most interesting and some of the most important stuff to talk about. But if you have any questions about this slider, feel free to drop a comment below and I will try to answer your question. Okay, so what is this Shark Slider Nano? This is the latest slider from iFootage and this is a two axis slider. So you have the normal left and right movement, but you also have the pen head here. So you have to access motorized feature with this slider. The development of this slider was start back in 2018. And even though iFootage already showed the product a fully working prototype back in early 2019, but now it is the late 2020 and this slider is just about to hit the market. So it's a very, very long development time. And one of the reasons is that they actually have gone through five different generations of this slider before they finally release it to the public. And once you start using this slider, you definitely see the reason why they have spent such a long time. There are two different versions of this slider available. You have the standard version with the price is $4.99 and also a bundle version and the price is $5.99. The standard version, you have the slider and you have the USB cable and you also have a phone holder that you can attach to the pen head. And the bundle version, you have everything I just mentioned, but in addition, you have a Sony type battery for you to power the slider. You also have a bunch of different cable, camera cable, there are five of them for you to connect the slider to your camera. That would be great if you are planning to do some time lapse or stop motion video. And also the bundle version also comes with a pretty nice carry case as well. But apart from the different accessory that is bundled between the two different versions, the slider itself is exactly the same. So what I'm going to talk about in this video can be applied to both versions of this slider. Okay, now let's talk about the design and build quality of this slider. This slider has a fully metal construction. Pretty much everything that you can see is made of metal. The slider, the size is one of the more compact slider in the market and it feels super super solid when you hold it in the hand because of the metal construction and it also has a very premium feeling as well when you hold it everything looks very nice very well put together there is no prey at all and if you want to twist it it doesn't twist at all so the build quality of this slider is definitely fantastic. The weight of this slider is 2.15 kg. If you consider its full metal construction, the size and also the amount of features that it has, I'm going to talk about some of the most important features very soon. I think the weight of this slider is definitely not bad at all. But I think the name Nano may be slightly exaggerated because if you look at it, it's small, 
is combat, but I would thought Nanro is something a little bit smaller than this size. But I can understand because they have a Shark Slider Mini. So this is smaller than the Shark Slider Mini. So calling it Nanro probably makes sense. But no matter what, with this slider, you can still easily fit it into a normal size camera bag if you want to carry it around. Or of course, if you buy the bundle version, then it comes with a pretty nice carry case that you can put it into the carry case itself. You can use this slider in two different modes. You can use it in desktop mode. Like right now, you just put it on a desktop or any flat surface. And if you do that, there are two down here for you to adjust the height of these two feet here so that you can have it place like very nicely on a desktop surface or you can use it in a tripod mode because there is a tripod screw hole here for you to mount it onto a tripod and another very nice design is if you use it on a tripod you can either mount it horizontally as most people would do but you can also use it in the vertical mode. And if you do that, there is actually another screw hole here so that you can mount the slider vertically like this onto a tripod. This is probably a very small design, but it is a very useful design because with most other slider in the market, if you want to use it vertically, you can do that. But normally you have to mount it onto the bottom uh, tripod hole and then you have to tilt the slider vertically and that create a few problems. The first thing is the slider itself may hit the leg of the tripod so you may have to juggle a little bit or you may have to use a uh, another tripod head or something to extend it out a little bit and if you do that it will change the center of the gravity of the tripod and whole system quite a bit forward so you would increase the chance of the whole tripod tipping over because now you have the slider quite a bit forward and then you mount the camera that makes the center of gravity quite a bit in front but with this one because the center of the gravity of the uh, slider is at the same point as the tripod so it makes this slider a lot more stable when you use it in vertical mode compared to most other sliders in the market on this side here you can see this very nice bright red dial here so this is for you to lock the slider so normally if you're in the unlock position and if you haven't power on the slider or when you're in the gesture mode which i'm going to talk about soon you can freely move this slider left and right but if you want you can turn it to this side and then now the slider is locked so it is very useful especially when you are putting the slider in the vertical position so you want to lock it to make sure your camera doesn't just suddenly drop so this is the dial for you to lock the slider and then here there's another dial here and this is for you to adjust the um I, what's it called it like how tight this cartridge is uh, locked onto the track so I was playing with it previously and I accidentally just make it very very loose. So if you do that, then end up you can actually lift the cartridge up a little bit. So if you notice that, then just dial it the other way and tighten it back. And now it is very securely and very solidly locked onto the track. And then you have the pen head and you have a lock here. So the lock, you can push it and then you will stop the pen head from being able to rotate. And then next to it, you have this bubble thingy here for you to make sure the slider is flat when you put it on a desktop or when you mount it on a tripod. And then on this side here, you have a pretty decent size IPS touch screen. So this is definitely one of the features that I really like about this slider. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in the next session. And the slider is powered by the Sony Type battery. So if you buy the bundle version that you already come with a Sony Type battery, but I think most people would already have one of this battery in your camera bag. So um, just slide it on. And also on the other side, there is a USB-C port here. So 
this is for you to use external power source to also power the slider and it can also be used to charge the Sony battery that you attach to the slider. So that is a very, very good feature because that means if you don't really have a uh, Sony type battery charger yourself, then you don't have to buy the charger separately, which save you quite a bit of money. And also it make it very easy because if you just want to use the battery to power the slider, you can do that. And then when you finish, you just need to plug in the USB-C power supply and then you can use it to charge the battery or you can just keep it on because you can also use the USB power source to power the slider. And in terms of the travel distance, when you use it in the desktop mode, the total travel distance is 20 centimeter. And if you use it on a tripod, now the total travel distance is increased to 32 centimeter because now the bottom plate can also move which extend the travel distance a little bit. Now 20 centimeter or 32 centimeter total travel distance is not the longest for a slider of this size but for people who want to buy a very compact slider that you can easily fit into a normal size camera bag I think this kind of travel distance is not too bad. In terms of the maximum payload, if you use the slider in the desktop mode, then the maximum payload is 3.5 kg. If you use it on a tripod and put it horizontally like this, then the maximum payload is 2.5 kg. And if you use it on the tripod but you use it vertically or in a diagonal uh, orientation, then the maximum payload is 2 kg. So again, this is probably not the class leading in terms of the maximum payload, but for most users who are shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, no matter it's a small micro four third or up to a full frame, with a normal size lens, the maximum payload is still pretty decent and should be enough for most users. Okay, now let me do a demo and show you how to set up and use this slider. So the first thing, power up the slider by pressing this power button here. You press it and then you can see the screen will start up. This is a very beautiful color screen and it's touch screen as well. Now it does take a bit of time for this slider to boot up and after it boot up, it will do a calibration process which help the slider to calibrate and make sure it will function properly. The calibration process takes quite a bit of time. I haven't timed it exactly, but I have a feeling it takes around one to two minutes for it to power up and do the calibration. With the current firmware that I have right now, every time you start up the slider, it would have to do the calibration process. But I have asked iFootage about it because every time you start up, you have to wait one or two minutes. That seems to be a pretty long waiting time. They told me that they have already planned that in the future, there will be a new firmware. And by that time, the user can choose whether they want to do the calibration or not when they start up the slider. And once the calibration is done, then you can see that the cartridge is moved to the left side of this slider. Now, one little thing that you have to be a bit careful if you are planning to use this slider on the tripod is because after you power up the slider and after it finished the calibration, the position of this upper cartridge will be on this far end, which means the slider itself is actually in the fully extended uh, position. So make sure your tripod is nice and secure before you start it up. Otherwise, at the end of the calibration process, it will fully extend it one side and there's a chance it may tip over if you haven't set up your tripod securely. So now you can attach your tripod head and camera onto the slider. One very nice thing I really like about this slider is the screw on the um, the pen head for you to attach the tripod. It has a very nice automatic design so that you can use tripod head with either size of the screw hole without having to use any extra adapter, which is very handy because while using those little adapter is all right, and that's what most of the tripod accessories are designed to use. But 
that's one thing that you have to remember to carry and also that's one thing that you can easily drop so with this automatic screw design that just make our life a lot easier okay so now let me attach this tripod head onto the slider and now you can mount the camera onto the tripod head and the slider is now ready for you to use this slider has three different modes that it can operate the normal one or you can set it up for time lapse or you can set it up for stop motion so let's look at the normal way how you would normally use this slider so now you just need to set up the a b pawn of your movement and to do that it is extremely easy with this slider what you need to do first is just press both the power and the function button together and let go and now you can position the uh, the slider and also move the pen head to exactly what you want just freehand like for example i want the starting position and the angle like this then i just leave it like this and i press the function button now you see that the b pawn on the screen is flashing and you can then just move it to where you want the B pawn to B and also position the head to exactly how you want it to be and then you just need to press the function button and that's it you already set up the start pawn the start uh, angle pen head angle and the end pawn and also the end pen angle of the whole movement and now you can press the power button um, or use the touch screen you can use either the button or the touch screen and see it now go back to the a pawn the start position and now you can either press the power button or the start button on the touch screen and you will start the moving and the pending action from the a pawn to the b pawn following exactly what i've said before i footage call a gesture learning and i just absolutely love this feature because it just make setting the ab pawn so easy and also so intuitive you just set it to exactly how you want to, it to be uh, look at the screen this is how i want to start and then look at the screen and set it to how i want it to end and just press one two button and that's it and if you want to make this movement faster or slower you can easily do that by just using the touch screen by pressing the time display on the touch screen and now you go to the next menu you can either adjust the time you want the whole movement to be you can set it to any kind of second minute or even hours or you can change it to speed and then you can change it from one percent up to hundred percent of the speed that this slider can move the touch screen is very responsive and the animation is very nice it's something that i really didn't expect because most of the camera accessories first thing is most of them if they have a touch screen then it's already fantastic and they usually don't have a um, any kind of animation normally when you press something it's just pop 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 but this one has a very very nice very smooth animation and also the response is very instant i definitely didn't expect a slider we have such a nice touch interface and there are also other settings that you can adjust from the touch screen for example you can turn on the loop mode so that the slider will keep moving back and forth or you can um, press the a b um, there's an a b button here that means it will swap the a b so that the b pawn become the start pawn of the movement instead of the a pawn and you can also um, go back to the main function and then you can go to the setting screen and there's a uh, start delay which means when you press the start it can delay for a few seconds before the actual movement start and the main reason is for you to minimize any kind of vibration that you may have caused when you are pressing either the button or the touch interface of the slider so i want to say that again i really enjoy using this 
touch screen because the whole interface is so smooth and so responsive. I just never expect a slider have such a nice touch interface and that makes the whole user interface and the user experience just really enjoyable. And another thing that I want to mention is the slider itself, the movement is very very quiet. Now let me run it. You can hear a bit of noise, especially if you are in a quiet room like this. But no matter what sort of speed you are running, uh, at the very slow speed or at the maximum speed, the amount of noise is still kept at a very very low level. Let me try to run it at the maximum speed. Change the setting speed, hundred percent, and start. That's very easy to change the speed. And now, uh, back to the original pawn, I can start. So it was running at the maximum speed and you can probably hear or not hear the noise from the motor or the whole action is very quiet because it's using a very high quality brushless motor and I think they probably have spent quite a bit of time making sure the belt and the gear system is also running very smoothly so yeah that is a very good thing the slider is very quiet but not only that the movement itself is also very smooth I did quite a bit of testing and also uh, put on this macro lens and also shooting some target in the very close distance at the almost macro distance. Usually with most of the motorized slider, if you are shooting some very close distance object using a macro lens, you can see the footage that you capture is usually not like super super smooth there will be quite a bit of uh, up and down left and right movement just because the motor itself and also the slider itself is not 100% smooth and it's not 100% solid but with this shark slider nano those kind of unwanted movement is very minimal even when shooting at almost macro distance and also the camera movement the speed of the movement is kept at a very um, constant speed most other slider you can notice the travel speed is not like 100% consistent sometimes it will speed up or speed down a little bit you normally wouldn't notice if you're shooting objects that is far away but yeah the closer the object is the more visible it is but with this nano slider the speed of the movement is very very consistent and constant so that is another very good thing about this shot slider nano now if there's one thing that i can complain about this gesture learning setting ab pawn is if you want to keep the um the pen head at the constant like if you don't want to actually pan the camera it is sometimes a little bit tricky depends on how you do it because for me normally i like to hold the camera and then move it and when i move it like this it's easy to introduce a bit of um, panning motion that i may not always want one thing you could do is there is a lock tab here that i can press that will lock so that would kind of stop me from turning it but um, you have to keep pressing it and i noticed there's still probably a little bit of panning movement that is possible even if you press the lock because i think when you press it it kind of move a little bit um so yeah that is probably the only complaint and probably a very minor complaint that i can have with this gesture learning because i could just move the camera using the base if I don't want to introduce any panning of the camera if I want to uh, but otherwise I really love this gesture learning it just make setting the AB pawn of this movement so much easier so much faster compared to most other slider in the market now one thing is right now you can only set two 
key pawn of this slider, you can only set the A and B. But I also asked iFootage about that and they said they are planning in the future they would allow you to set more than two pawn of the movement. So hopefully very soon you would already be able to set multiple pawns for the slider movement. As I mentioned a little bit earlier on in this video, there's also the time lapse mode and also the stop motion mode that is available with this slider. And if you want to use one of these two modes, then you would need to use the shutter cable and connect your camera to the slider. And one very nice thing about this slider is that when you connect the shutter cable, which is included if you buy the bundle version and plug it into your camera, and the other side of this shutter cable, most slider that I have used, you will connect it directly onto the main, uh, the main controller unit or the motorized unit, which is quite far away from the camera. But with this slider, you just directly plug it to the base of this cartridge, which is right here. And the advantage of this is the whole thing will move up together when the camera is moving so that means you wouldn't be pulling or stretching the cable when the slider is moving to the opposite side from the control unit so unlike some other slider if you imagine if you are connected to like this side then you can see that when you are moving to the other side, it will start be pulling the camera, which sometimes may cause a bit of vibration or a bit of movement to the camera. So with this sharp slider nano, it is connecting to the base of the cartridge. So that is a very nice little design. And to use those two modes, you just use the touch screen and it is very, very easy to use because how iFootage designed the whole user interface, it make everything just very easy, very intuitive. Even the first time I already figured out how to use it, I don't have to try like find the menu or try it a few times. I don't need that because everything is pretty self-explanatory by just looking at the touch screen. So apart from using the touch screen and also the buttons to control the slider, iFootage has also created a smartphone app which is called the iFootage Moco app that is available for both the iOS and Android. With that app, then you can use it to control the slider. And that app actually there are two different modes that you can how you can use the app. The first mode is if you want to use your phone more like a camera and you attach it to the slider. Remember the slider also comes with a smartphone holder so you can attach the smartphone holder to the slider and put your smartphone onto the holder so that you can use your smartphone as a camera to record video or stop motion video. But if you ask me, I think most people buying this slider would probably want to use their mirrors camera with the slider instead of putting a smartphone on the slider to capture video. So I think most people would be using the Moco app as a wireless remote controller of the slider. And the Moco app provides you all the controls and features that is available on the touch screen interface and the buttons. But there's more, there is a virtual joystick which allow you to control the movement and also the panning of this slider by just using the virtual joystick. So remember what I said before, when you're using the gesture learning to move your camera to set the AB pawn, you may introduce some unwanted panning motion when you don't want to pan it. If you use the Moco app, then you use the virtual joystick to just do the movement without touching the panning joystick, then you can make sure there's no panning that you accidentally introduce. So if you want to have more precise control and adjustment of the slider, then you can use the Moco app instead. Because I'm doing this review before the slider actually is released to the market, so I'm using a pre-production sample of the slider and also the app iFootage told me many times that the app is still not completely finalized. They are still working very actively on it. They are still making changes pretty much every day. So they tell me many times that the app may not be um, very polished and maybe not very stable. But I 
didn't find it that way because I found the app is actually very well polished and seems to be very stable. I didn't have any issue when using the app at all. Everything is very responsive and all the features seems to be working with the app. So yeah, don't know what they're talking about, but that is probably a good news. However, if there's one thing that I want to complain, I would probably say the user interface of the Moco app is not the most beautifully designed user interface that I have ever seen. Don't get me wrong, everything is very logically laid out. Everything work very well and easy to use. But if you ask me if this is a beautiful app, I would say it's okay and there are definitely rooms for improvement. Okay, so what do I think about this Shark Slider Nano? I think there are so many things that make me really love this slider. But let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this slider. And I think I should start with things I don't like first because there are not many things that make me don't like about this slider. And when I say don't like, that's probably too strong a word. <laughs> I probably say like things that could be improved. And I would say the things that could be improved are things like the travel distance and also the maximum payload, especially when you put it on the tripod and put it in the vertical orientation. The maximum payload and the travel distance, they are not class leading. And another thing is when you start up at least with the firmware that I'm using right now, the startup time, including the calibration at the beginning, takes a bit of time. And also, you can only set the A, B pawn. The, you cannot set multiple key pawn. But they told me that they are definitely aiming to improve and fine tune the usability and feature that is available on this slider. And they actually suggest people to go to their Facebook user group to give them feedback so that they can continue to work on and improve this slider. I put a link of the user um, user group on Facebook down below so that you can find it out and join the user group if you want to give some feedback or ask them questions about this slider. Now, I know a lot of companies will promise that they are going to fix this and fix that, improve this and improve that in the future. Uh, whether you can believe it or not is up to you because to be honest, sometimes they just promise you, but you never see those coming in the firmware update in the future. But this time, because iFootage, they spent like two years developing this slider. That is a lot longer than most companies would want to spend to develop a product like this. So that actually give me a lot of confidence about the company and also the strategy, how they develop their product. If they can spend two years and go through five different generation of the prototype or the products before they actually release it to the market, you can see that the company is actually pretty serious about their product. So when they tell me they are going to address it in the future and they already planned about it, I actually feel like, yes, they tell me that, I feel like, yes, they are going to do that, but let's see whether they will do it or not. But anyway, that's pretty much the only thing that I can complain about this slider. And on the other hand, there are so many things that I love about this slider. The first thing is how smooth and how stable this slider is. When I compare the footage that I shot using this slider with other slider, I can easily see how much smoother the footage is when I'm shooting with this slider. And the gesture learning way to set the AB pawn of this slider is definitely a game changer, even though I don't like to use that word. But it's just so fast and it's so intuitive. And that's one of the things that I wouldn't call a ping pong, but it's just one of the things that annoy me a little bit when using most other slider is you have to kind of like press the button and wait for the slider motor to move from the pawn that you want to set and then you set it back. The time it takes you to set the AB pawn is much longer than the actual footage that you are going to get. But with this slider, the time it takes to set the AB pawn is very minimal. It just takes you a few seconds. You just move it this way, bang, move it to the B pawn, bang, and that's it. So that is just 
one thing that makes me really love about this slider. Compared to most other sliders, which only has like two or three physical buttons on the slider, so you have to memorize what are the combination of keys that you have to press for some certain features. With this iFootage Sharp Slider Nano because of its touch interface, so everything is very clearly you can see it on the touch screen. It just makes using this slider a lot easier, a lot faster, and a lot more user intuitive. And after using this slider, I can finally understand why it took iFootage such a long time to develop this slider, because. Everything is very well designed and also very well implemented. You can easily see they put a lot of efforts and a lot of thoughts about every single small details of this whole slider. It really shows you that if a company is spending a lot of effort and a lot of time to create a product, instead of just rushing it and just trying to push it out to the market as soon as possible, it makes a huge difference to how the final product is gonna be when it hit the market. I understand that in a commercial world, especially today's world when everything is changing so quickly, it would be a bit hard to just spend a lot of time and effort to create a product. But when a company decide to do that, then the result is an amazing product like this iFootage Sharp Slider Nano.